what did you particularly love about how they set up Natasha Leon's character? interesting I noticed something in the pilot when I read it and I noticed like just the little intricacies about Charlie that just made her so specific she's friends with everyone like she is that person who is just she's smoking cigarettes and hanging out with the valets she knows all the housekeepers she's friends with the security guard her her weird you know kind of criminal neighbor she's friends with she's someone who kind of loves life right you see this she's working in this like casino kind of a it's kind of a dead-end job it's not something super aspirational for her um and there's a moment pilot and then the show where she talks about it's not a big life it's not a successful life it's a perfectly fine life and it's such an interesting dynamic because we don't always see that like yeah because I read an interview with Ryan Johnson where he mentions this because I'm not even sure I caught on quite as much as you did about the uniqueness of the you know average life of it all in that sense and he said something about how when he was first trying to break in in his 20s like a lot of us there were many years of nothing happening he was working these dead-end jobs and he was basically like it was a psychological survival strategy to turn around and say okay this is not horrible i can make it through this this is the path to being the person i want to be and instead of sitting around and bitching and moaning about it i am going to actually be okay with that and he thought back to that period of his life when he first was creating charlie So in the pilot, Charlie's friend, Natalie, um, is killed. And in the early parts of the pilot, we, we learned that Natalie has got an abusive husband and it really upsets Charlie. And they do this thing where they set up that there's also Charlie's listening to this podcast and she's yeah. like learning about child sex trafficking ring. And later, and we, we basically discover that it wasn't, Charlie wasn't murdered by her husband. She was murdered by Charlie's boss. Natalie. 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 Yes. Natalie. And, and so when Natalie's like Charlie basically realizes, and she says at one point, I don't do anything. I just kind of talk. Natalie was going to do something and it got her killed. And it's such a great moment. Charlie got this skill. She could probably use for good somehow. She, but, but she didn't, and she never has. And she is content with this. And when she sees someone who is good and someone who has been abused by, you know, her husband and now has been, you know, killed and nobody seems to care that moment when Charlie takes it on herself. Um, yeah. And I think we also start to see, and this kind of plays out through the series, Charlie's obsessive nature because she can't let something go even when she should. Natalie's death is not only sort of kicking the plot into motion, it's the inciting incident for Charlie's journey in terms of Charlie being, and they actually literally put this line in the pilot, but like, you know, Miss Galahad, that she <laughs> is the person who is going to try to make things right. And, and as you say, we get, we don't actually really see that blossom until we really understand the effect of Natalie's death on her. But I thought that was smart because whether she was always like that or whether it really took Natalie's death to make her into, you know, Miss Galahad, Miss Columbus <laughs> of poker face, we don't totally know, but we do know that it makes sense in terms of what we've learned about her before, that she is the friend to everybody and that she really does care. It also makes sense in terms of it, this, this particular incident really being an inciting incident to kick her into a whole nother year of trying to make things right and doing the justice thing. I just loved the fact that this did harken back to the older pilots when instead of the detective being part of the upper class, let's just say like there, there is a there is a whole sort of raft of shows that have focused on, you know, the kind of upper classness of the really smart person or the intelligent detective. And I like that this kind of harkened back to just pure working class yeah. detective, not just, you know, the people who they are protecting or working class, but that they themselves are clearly of the working class. And I love the way in 
the actual script, it's very specific about the low-income homes, that she lives in a trailer park, that we're showing the, the side of the casino world that it's not just where all the glitzy entrance for the high rollers is, but we're showing like the, have, the employees have to go through a metal detector. We're showing the fact that she drives this kind of dusty 69 Plymouth Barracuda. I mean, just all these kind of tokens that put us in a very specific part of Vegas and it's not you know like I said the glitzy Vegas of Ocean's Eleven or whatever it's the other side so I just kind of love that it was very like Barbara Ehrenreich I'm going to show you you know the work uh, well and, and I think yeah and I think it's too like I mean with shows like not procedurals but shows like Succession and all these shows that are showcasing like the there there there's been a lack of that I think yeah, so yeah. I think there is something nice about like not everybody has a private jet. Like she's, you know, not everybody w- works at their father's corporation. Yeah. Like she, every everyone in that show is just trying to get, but not just in the pilot, but as when the world continues to get just as specific. And I do love how her car becomes a bit of a character as it goes on as well. So they do a great job in the pilot of setting it up. I mean, that's her yeah. home, yeah. her her safety yeah. net, and we get to see that. So yeah. yeah, the world is so specific and so and just felt so real.